welcome to the latest episode of the series How to Paint Miniatures. In the upcoming tutorials, we'll be painting figures from the Bloodborne board game. On today's video, we will cover the steps to paint the church giant. If you're enjoying these guides, consider subscribing for more board game painting tutorials and don't forget to like the video to help us. For this project, you need the following colors. The first step of this mini was making the base, and I linked the tutorial for all the Bloodborne mini bases here. After basing and priming the miniature, I diluted my Cridge Blue and painted the skin of the giant with it. I blended with the black primer so we have a nice phantasmagoric base for this body. Then I cheated a bit and dry brushed Longbeard Grey to block where the edges would pop more to help me blend on the next step. With this information, I started blending three colors to achieve this look on the skin. Abaddon Black with Macridge Blue for the darker parts, then mixing the blue with Corex White and going all the way to full white for the edges of the bones. While it was drying, I used Abaddon Black to clean the bell and make the base of the decaying shorts and rags on the legs. Since I started with the center of the mini, I used Mechanical Standard Grey to paint the interior of the cape and help me block the difference between the legs and the clothes. I also used this color to paint the base of the hat. I mixed Abaddon Black with Mechanical Standard Grey to make a darker tone and layer some shadows coming from the top of the interior of the cape to halfway length, enhancing the shadows of the folds while I was at it. Then I used a mix of Administratum Grey and Mechanical Standard Grey to add the contrasting light on the folds of the cape, shorts and on the hat. I let the center dry and mixed Mechanical Standard Grey and Corex White to paint the base of the cape. And this is how it looked on the back of the model. For the rags and rope necklace, I diluted Hinox Hide and blended with the black primer, just to add a hint of dark brown. Then I started blending the Hinox Hide into the Mornfang Brown on the elevations. Finally, I blended the Mornfang Brown into the Zendry Dust only on the edges so the model could pop more from a distance. At this point, I also started layering the Abaddon Black of the shorts with Mechanical Standard Grey to make it more visible and darken the holes of the cape. I let it dry and move on to the axe handle, which I painted with a mix of Hinox Hide and Mornfang Brown. Then I mixed Mornfang Brown with Zendry Dust to create the veins of the handle's wood. With the same mix of Mornfang Brown and Zendry Dust, I diluted it further to create some light points on the bell and neck chains. I let it dry and moved on to the X tip, which I painted with Iron Warriors. After the bell dried, I dry brushed Sigmarit on the edges and center of the bell and chains to create the reflection effect. Back to the axe, I used new oil to darken the metal except the sharpened edge. Once it was dry, I dry brushed Nitro compound on the edges of the metal to enhance the reflections. Almost done, now let's finish the cape by using Admin Stratum Grey to add lights on the folds and diluted Mechanical Standard Grey to cast some shadows on the fabric. After everything dried, I dry brushed Corex White on the edges of the cape to bring everything to a lighter tone and sharpen the edges. I also highlighted the hat, but it was hard to see in this image. Last but not least, it's not Bloodborne without blood, so I mixed Mephstone Red and Abaddon Black to stain the axe and bottom of the cape. And this is the final result. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and if you have any constructive feedback, questions or suggestions, don't hesitate to drop in the comment section below. If you still haven't done so, hit the bell button to get a notification when the next episode is up. See you next time!